Power Lunch, everybody. I'm Jan, and we are live from Meta Talk Drums. We didn't do that because Lucy's not here. <laughs> Our speakers today are Eric Michelette and Paul Foster. Eric is a business consultant and works with businesses in the metro area, area developing growth and profit strategies with them. Paul is an accounting consultant and works with business to develop financially strong balance sheets. The strength is used to develop opportunities and face challenges. Paul and Eric are presenting this information on business disruption for a second time. The first time was last October at a PEK balance sheet preview. Paul and Eric work together in situations where disruption has occurred and day-to-day -day management support is needed. Both Paul and Eric are longtime Office Center members and around all around great members. They attend as many networking events as possible. So let's welcome Paul and Eric. And Jan, before you walk away, Jan, you want to say hi? What is happening here at Minnetonka? I mean, I drive in, parking lot's full, the people are here. I mean, what is going Isn't on? Isn't that fabulous? It really we, is. We have great energy here. Love it, love it, love it. Minnetonka is 2019, number 18 award. 18th center of the year. 2018 center of the year. Yes. Congratulations. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. Is, that, is that here or is it nationally? Just here, this oh, center. Oh, this yes. center. In, the, in, the, in the metro area. Yes, for all office centers. Yes, yes. 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 we're very proud. Very proud. All office centers. <laughs> Thank you. All co working spaces. The seven locations oh, that Lori okay. has. Okay. <laughs> You're number one. I want to clarify that. This year, we have, or last year, number one. She, she does a rotation and gives it to everyone. Right. So it's kind of cool. Well, we're going for back to back. Minnetonka be All right. Long. We're going to bring you. it home today, all right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, thank you so much. Eric, any opening remarks before I get started? Uh, if you haven't filled out your card, go ahead and just put it, uh, put a uh, business disruption on your card. Some people watch it a little bit later. Just if you write down something good or bad that you think could happen to your business or one of your customers' businesses. Sorry. Yeah, and we're, we're here to offer you an interactive event today. So if you have questions, if you think of something, we're going to also go through the business interruptions together. Paul will lead that right now. Yes. yes. Thank you so much, Eric. And we always like to acknowledge Will on our technology video. Woo! We are streaming live on YouTube all around the globe, right? Exactly. All around the globe. Exactly. So World Wide Web, we are here. So it's really, a, this is our PEK second power lunch here at Minnetonka. And it's just really a pleasure to be here with everyone. And I know some of you individually, but if you can stick around later, we get a chance to talk one-on-one, -on -one, that would be great. So our topic today is balance sheet and disruption to the balance sheet. How do businesses respond to disruption? And this is a very, very significant topic to recognize that what can happen to a business when there's disruption. So I want to first give you an introduction to an approach, the PEK, how we work with our clients so that you can relate this disruption to that. But our approach to working with our clients is an approach called balance sheet business management. And that approach involves decision making. All decisions we want to focus on, what is that impact to the balance sheet? How is this particular decision going to impact the balance sheet in the short term and in the long term? And our studio audience here, <laughs> And do stu online too? They they yes. they don't get the form. Do they get the form? They should get the form. They get the form. Our studio audience and everyone <laughs> viewing everywhere has got this form that has the kind of a chart with assets, liabilities, and the equity, kind of the, the basic structure of a balance sheet. And we're going to refer to that in just one minute, but it's just important to recognize the balance sheet. Is a wealth of information for managing a business. 
and how you can leverage that information to better manage your business and make decisions you can make the difference between staying in business or going out of business. So we point to this balance sheet making decisions. Making decisions so that we build balance sheet strength. And we want to look at what are, we pair that with what are the drivers of balance sheet strength. So you want to drive balance sheet strength and make good decisions relative to those accounts on that balance sheet. If you can take your form that you've got and your handout, your handout has on the very top section, it's got three accounts that are so critical to building balance sheet strength. Those three accounts are cash, accounts receivable, and inventory. Everyone should be familiar with those three accounts on their particular balance sheet. And so driving balance sheet strength, those accounts we focus on. And so the sales activity that occurs from inventory account to accounts receivable to cash, this is the significant business flow. Selling inventory to customers that pay and then collecting that cash and then starting the process all over again. This is so critical to balance, building balance sheet strength. We call this conversion, how companies convert their inventory to accounts receivable to cash, being focused on this conversion process for your company. So now we say, okay, this is great. This provides us information that we're able to do to predict revenue going forward three or four months. We're able to manage, make decisions to the balance sheet. Then what happens there? You want to make sure your balance sheet strength converting to cash. Yes. Yes. If you don't convert to cash, you're out of business. Yes. Cash is the blood of your business. People don't realize what that really means. If you don't have cash, it sounds simple, but a lot of companies run out of cash even though they say they have money in the bank. That's not the same thing as knowing what your cash flow is really going to be. Most companies that I deal with in turnaround management go out of business for one reason and one reason only, poor cash management. That's the biggest issue. Yes. So we have asked our, our studio audience here to <coughs> break down the, what business disruptions they have noticed that occur to organizations. Everyone has a card, and we would like to have our studio audience members share a disruption. So, Carl, I'd like you to come up, bring your card, and I'd like you to read your disruption. It's not very comfortable. Yeah, come on up. <laughs> All right. Okay, you might not see me again. So, Carl, read your disruption. A uh, key employee quits or departs. A key employee quits or departs. Carl's in the payroll and human capital management area. That is very significant. Tom, would you like to come up and share your disruption? You can look at the camera, it's okay. Carl can't. <laughs> Mine is if you have a construction thing that's out of your control. And I'll give you a couple examples. One wow. is, uh, is it the electric fetus or whatever at 35? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a couple of years. Oh my gosh. Not Road construction. Right. So, or Nicollet Mall, when you have water main or something like that. So, you don't know how long it's going to be out when you turn. That is a tremendous example. Bob, if you got a, you came in a little bit late, but we, we, we asked you to come up and share disruption. <coughs> so, uh, my first one was the same as yours. So, I put, in, I put in recession and you're a cyclical business. Recession, cyclical business. Absolutely. Very good. Great disruption. John, have you got a disruption to share? 
Sure, but I don't want to be on the World Wide Web. Well, we, we want to bring you up. We want to bring you up. It's okay. We, want, we welcome John, John Moline, long time Don't no last name. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Long time PEA associate. Okay, John. Ah, a person or people posting negative feedback on social media, whether true or not. Ooh. Oh, oh yeah. that's bad. That's bad. That's bad. So, Craig. 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 All right. Craig. Give it a whirl. Yep. Come on up. Share your disruption. <laughs> well, just getting in with tax season. I hate taxes. So I would say uh, political, whether at the federal, state, or local level, taxation changes and how they affect a balance sheet. Absolutely, wow. very significant. So we've got human we've got human resource issues, road construction, social media, taxes, economy, economy. economy. Amy, have you got one to share? I did actually have. Bring it on up, Amy. Amy Miller. No last name. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is Amy. This is just Amy. Um, so mine is someone has a new idea or development that they beat you to or that they take from you. Oh. That's so true. IP, intellectual property, or yes. something even less. Yes. Even something more basic. Yes. yes. Wow. Well, we have got some incredible examples. An example to share? Sure. Yep. You know, bring it on up. Yep. We'll we'll introduce we'll yourself we'll as well. We'll do we'll Don't do say it. last name. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't use a last name. I use Magic Brad as my only name. Okay. Yes. This is about the internet. And what, uh, what's happened with the internet is it's really disrupt, disrupted because it's a method of communication that has changed everything from kind of locally, all of a sudden globally. And you can't really tell if it's local or global. And the anonymity of everybody. So that's Absolutely. a huge anonymity. disruption. Absolutely, technology. Incredible disruption. Mark, would you like to share? Yeah. We've just about got anyone, uh, everyone uh, share their disruption. So, Mark, it'd be great to hear from you. Yeah, I, I come from the industrial manufacturing world. So, the big issue for me, and it's happening now, is tariffs. Trade wars are stupid ideas. Nobody wins. Wow, trade wars. Trade wars. Trade wars. Well, we've got I mean, some models well, being the tariffs, HR, road construction, tariffs, taxes, trade wars, trade wars slash tariff, tariff, or others, social media, media. social media, um, internet, internet. You don't know who you're doing business with. Am I next door to you, or am I around the planet? Industrial property. Intellectual property. Intellectual property. Lawsuits. Lawsuits. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, <somebody's laughs> <really. laughs> okay, now we're really cooking. Did you have one? Well, come on in. Come on in. I don't have a card. You don't have a card. Just say your first name. Just hold it. Say your first name. My name is Sugi. I'm from Diamond Care Home Health Care. Um, I one thing that we are facing is not just the business side, but you know, PCA they don't get funded that much, so then we pay the worker lower. So the quality of care is kind of hard to maintain, and they, they you know, they end up going to group home and nursing home, which actually costs more. So how is it, how is it affecting the business? Is PCA shortage? Yes. Yeah. So it's so, very oh, tough. What's your first name? So, 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 so pricing and yeah. labor pricing yeah. issue, you say? Healthcare, government, and also. Yeah. Healthcare. Yep. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much, you. Suki. Really appreciate that. And no, glad you came in. in. <laughs> well, my name is Wen. And then I don't have a business yet, but I'm going to. So that's why I'm here today. And I think from my whole, obviously I'm from China, so I think the most time I would be facing about is cultural difference. Cultural. Oh, cultural. I can't yeah. Cultural right. difference. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can relate as well. Okay. Right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cultural. Tremendous. Cultural. Yeah, very good. Wow. Well, look at this list. Look at this list of, of areas that disrupt Business. Why business? 
That's right. Why are why, why do we come to work? Right. Okay. So we look at our three accounts on our balance sheet: inventory, accounts receivable to cash, that conversion, selling products, services to accounts receivable, to collecting the cash. Every one of these particular areas could cut this line, cut this arrow, and stop this activity dead in its tracks. Cultural issues, customer issues, HR problems, workflow, road construction stops people from coming into the door, selling product, taxes, trade wars, cutting off of a volume, social media, Bad reputation to products and services, who stops the, stop the selling? Internet, unable to service the customer because their internet goes down or problems of that nature. IP issues, competitive, competitive uh, actions against IP potentially could stop sale of product. Lawsuits, how many, how many have been in a lawsuit where it stops the business? dead in its tracks. And then of course healthcare, additional costs for <clears throat> personnel. So this is what we're talking about, a disruption to this conversion process that stops a business and stops balance sheet strength building activity. When your balance sheet is not building strength, you're going the other way. And this is why we feel this topic is so important to focus on. What could happen? What are our risks? How do we mitigate this? Because our goal is to build a strong balance sheet. Know our conversion, be able to predict revenue, and do the necessary planning to build that balance sheet. Eric, how have I done so far? Fantastic. You know, we have, there's other changes too that we're in the cover. I just put a few up here too, and I think this is fantastic. But ownership changes, huge disruption. I love the lawsuit when I have a client with about two million in lawsuits going against them right now. Guess what their bankability is right now? Zero. No bank will fund them. Fund the course. Divorce, oh, very good. Not that it will never happen. Yeah, because you can't. It won't happen. This anything that challenges your business, but it can be something, you know, more positive too. An ownership change can be positive. So we don't have a bunch of negative changes. New markets and new customers. What happens when you have a new market or new customer? You need cash to invest into those new markets and new customers. If a customer says they want a million dollars in inventory, and these big numbers, but it could be a thousand, a hundred thousand. Where are you going to get the money to fund that from? Vendors, your bank, family and friends, hard money investors. The company I'm working with with the $2 million in legal fees, they're paying hard money, can capital. 360% interest to fund the business. That's all the funding they can get. The next slide, folks. Thanks. What I, want you to do, what I want you to do is look at this slide real quick. You've got it on your sheet, but I'd like you to put a number in here. I want to see if you know what you're looking at, if you feel a company is healthy or not. If you put, let's do 5,000 in cash, we're going to do 100,000 in accounts receivable, and inventory of 30,000. What does that look like to you? Does anybody see something that you would think is good or bad with these numbers? I have 5,000 in cash, 100,000 in accounts receivable, and 30,000 in inventory. Way too much account receivable. Very good. Yeah. Receivables is so out of balance right now. Are they bankable is a question. Probably because yeah. most banks will fund you on receivables. Also, another factor that comes in is factoring. Factoring is they will fund you a certain percentage of your accounts receivable. It's expensive money. Generally, in around the teens to the 20s, depending upon what industry you're in. Now, what happens if I got payroll on Friday and today is Thursday? I have 5,000 in cash. Payroll is 25,000. What happens to my business? People mistake cash in the bank for being in business and account. 
they're not protecting. That's a simple thing you can look for tomorrow and say, you should be surprised how many that you can run into that don't have enough money for payroll at the end of the week, or the following week, or whatever it may be, because they're not planning cash. This is what causes businesses to put a bounce. The reason this company is at 360% interest is they didn't plan. They've got, they didn't plan to find another source of cash. So they're now being 360 to make payroll. 360% interest. And it's a personal guarantee on the owner. His firstborn, they could own him. The second born, they own her. And his wife doesn't know about it. How's that going to work? And this is a personal guarantee. So what does that do to your own personal financial situation? Planning is everything. It's all I'm driving in here. If you fail to plan, you will find yourself failing within your own plan of non-planning. Complicated wording, but it is true. It happens all the time. Get a plan in place, otherwise you will be out of business. Next slide, please, Will. This is a simple review of a conversion cycle. And people say, well, what does that look like to what I'm doing? I know you say, well, it's me. I got a simple business, a startup or something. But you're working with other companies. If they can't even figure out their own cash plan of conversion, which Paul drives on the balance sheet, how long are they going to stay in business paying you? How much can you afford to lose in your business? I see accounts receivables stretched out 120 days, $5,000, $100,000, $1,000,000. $1, what does that do to your business? If you're doing a contract and you're paying all these other people, including office centers, to host your office or your space, how are you going to pay all these other people if you're not being paid on time? How are you managing your customers' accounts receivables? Or are they managing you? Clients that I work with with some of the big companies in the area, they're being paid 120 day terms. Now we're gonna make the math really simple for everybody. What happens if I make payroll every two weeks? Or I pay one service provider? Or I pay family and friends to help me with my business? And I pay them every two weeks. I, if I have a 35 day receipt from a customer, I already have two payrolls in by the time I even get paid. You're gonna be funding that shortfall. There is no way to make, you can't go to employees and say, oh, by the way, it was really nice of you to be here today. Uh, we can't pay you. I have it happen. I had uh, one of the business owners who was very well, he said people can go without pay. It's okay, we'll figure it out another time. Now, obviously he doesn't feel the pain. He doesn't have the empathy. You can't do that. I mean, he lost three really good people, top talent. How's he gonna get them back? He can't. They're gone. What happens to the reputation of your business? Trouble. So this is a simple conversion chart. I know we're dealing with very complex things, but there's very simple ways of looking at it. Can you go to the next slide? Well, yeah. This is a simple cash flow cycle. And I just wanted to see, you should draw this out on your own. Now this is simple stuff, looks like, but who is responsible for inventory? And this isn't just for you, this is for your clients too. Who's responsible for accounts receivable? What happens if accounts receivable, the person I have that's helping me collect cash is sick? So Bill on Monday calls in sick. I got payroll due Friday, I'm sure. Who's gonna get on the phone and make those calls? You have somebody else in the office, somebody in your network, a family member? How do you manage these areas, inventory? I need to have 30,000 dollars worth of inventory due in on Friday. You can't just call someone and say, here, I need a place for $30,000. You have to have credit worthiness. You have to prove to them you can pay them back. Or you have to set arrangements. <coughs> a lot of people don't know how to do wire transfers. Amazingly simple concept. ACH, reoccurring payments. You have to put these in place with your bank. Your cash management banker is your friend. They are the ones that will help you facilitate cash management and receipts and outbound payments. They will save you enormous amounts of time and money because you don't want to be paying 360% to a factor or some other hard money entity to get the inventory you have to have to meet your customers' needs. And it could be services too. It could be an internet provider, a new website, whatever it may be, it could be your expense in that grouping, depending on what services you offer. 
fixed assets. I need computers, PC, servers. If you have a router more than two years old, I can hack into it in five minutes. Anybody can. If you have a router, and I have a company too, they had a router that was three years old, they got hacked, $150,000, they spent the curl on track to go back and redo and check to see how far they got into the system. Now, $150,000 may not be much to you, but it's a lot of money to me. And you'd be surprised how many people shrug. Backing up your systems. Crawl charges $4,000 for most hard drives if your hard drive fails. Well, I back it up to the cloud here and there or whatever. If you get hacked, I get ransomware twice a week, emails, spoofing my own email addresses. And it's, you know, I know it's fraud because I know how to look at the header to see that it's simply not true. Because you can look at the header and see these things. Be surprised how many people pay Bitcoin. If you do that, they own you. So we're going to get the money. That's another disruption. You start paying the Bitcoin crowd on the ransomware, you're marked. So you're going to need insurance. Um, just simple things for investments. I don't want to get too far into that, but you know you have to plan. People say I have a laptop, I'm good to go. How many people use VPN? I can hack into anybody's laptop with a pineapple or any device within about three minutes. I can see your passwords, all the websites you go to. It's so simple, it's, it's scary. I was at the airport in Austin. But then the time I had my VPN running, it disconnected for some reason, wasn't paying attention. I logged into my to one of my accounts. By the time I got onto the plane and logged into their Wi-Fi, they were already going after all my stuff. <clears throat> 30 minutes. Now I have everything locked down with two-factor authentication, but it doesn't matter. They were going after everything they could that I had logged into in that 10 minutes in the airport because I did not verify my open VPN connection. So, you know, those are things you have to look at. Most computers, when they're compromised, you have to wipe the hard drive clean. So, just FYI, so you're going to pay somebody to do that or do it yourself. Um, these are simple business disruptions that I wanted to share with you about your cash. Receivables, what are my terms going to be? 30 days? 30 days means I'll get paid, if I'm lucky, 35, 40. How many payroll cycles, as I mentioned, you went through? You went through two. What about the other bills? I've got all the other expenses that go with that. Who's funding that gap between the time I get paid and the cash disbursements needed to fund my business? Mom, dad, kids, friends, family, um, petters, Madoff? I mean, you know, you're going to have to find some way to get the money from. I've got some great hard money people if you need them. Uh, his name is Joe. You can get your fund in one day. You sign the slips, go fund you. Your banker is your best friend. Be transparent with them. You need to show them how you generate cash into your business. What is the quality of those receivables? What do my contracts look like? Can you go to the next slide, please? One of the things banks force, and I didn't get into borrowing based agreements and covenants because we don't have enough time here. <coughs> and then we're going to show you, zoom in on this, but this is what a 13 week cash flow looks like. Most companies that are small, you can do something even more granular, and this is day by day. What are my expenses? Every day that I have to pay, what are my receipts? Every day I know I'm going to get in. You need to hold yourself accountable and your team accountable for every day cash management. Now, if you're a 3M, it's not maybe as big because you got a little wiggle room. But for most companies out there, they don't have that wiggle room. Well, can you go to the next one? A simple cash management program, and you can figure it out, do it yourself. This one actually loads in from a data file from another server and populates behind the scenes all the data, which may be a thousand records of payables and receipts that are coming in and out. But it populates a simple spreadsheet. And you can do this on yourself. But you have money that you have money you start with a balance, you got cash on hand, here's your operating balance at 83000 Simply come out with cash in the bank of a balance. That's the money I have to work with. Every day I can see what's happening up here. What are my balances at the end of every day? Where is the receipts coming from? House receivable, miscellaneous sales. Um, you can do some other projections for general. Oops, I guess I did touch <laughs> what is it. This is not part of the plan. <laughs> But the, uh, you know, what you, what you end up with is a way you can present to yourself, your team, and the bank how I am managing cash. This, this becomes part of your barn-based agreement in some way, so I'll explain that later. 
I'm going to go next slide, Paul. Disbursements. What do I have going out the door every day? Here's some people with hard money. This is because they didn't plan. Do you realize how much every day is going out to the hard money crowd? This example, $4,700 and change. Every day is going to pay can capital and a bunch of others. You know, that $4,700 a day is out the door before you even get started with everything else. That's pretty spooky. Uh, what else do I want to point out? Let's see. Um, all right, we've got 82,000 in the bank. I like to show people that number. How much do you think payroll is in a company like this? Like getting money from it. <laughs> I get it. That's cool. I like that touch screen. Um, so, look, payroll here. We got 82,000 in the bank. Looks okay, right? Payroll's 93,000. See a problem? Yeah. Where am I going to get the money? Oh. Guess who I have to go back to? These guys. In the case of this, I was able to call customers and have them pay ahead by offering a discount of 2%. Still money out the door, but it sure beats paying 360% to these guys. Lack of planning. When you do that, what do you tell them? Why, why, why do you tell What do you tell somebody when you <coughs> call us for, for, for terms to speed up their payment? We, you know, if you do it as a part of a program where you offer incentives, it's, nobody gets the red, red light on. When you panic, it becomes ugly. Then they think you're going out of business or in trouble. So you always have it as part of your regular program. We offer these terms to our customers, including an early pay of 10 days at 1% or whatever number you choose to offer them. Now 1% doesn't sound like much, but accounting people, they get excited. I mean, the accounts payable people just jump up and down for one or 2%. They live off of it. I mean, if you stole Paul, I'll give you a 2% deal. He's going to be wild. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, because it, it, may, you know, it lowers your cost of doing of the uh, product or service in which you're covering. It could be rent, could be uh, equipment, could be uh, paint shirts. Who knows? Um, oh, here, yeah, payroll. Now, this, in the case, this payroll just didn't cut off. The payroll is due here. 69,000 is the balance. They have 93,000 due for payroll. I had to call some people we normally didn't give discounts to and say, hey, we got a new program. And they owed about 250,000. I got a couple of takers, so we were able to cover that and other expenses as well. But I am bleeding every day fighting this that these people had done earlier. What do you do about it? You can't just take them out. Hard money are a lot of contracts. Have an attorney look at all the contracts you do. They didn't. Every contract you sign will make or break your business. You cannot believe how many people don't look at contracts with legal teams. They're saving $2,500. A guy I know, he saved $2,500 when he did a buy sell agreement. He had his brother in law look at it. His brother in law is not an attorney, he thinks he is. He lost his home, $10 million lake in Lake Minnetonka because he didn't read the documentation with a legal eye. Simple things. They controlled the cash. The operating agreement he signed, they controlled the cash. It's like the profit, except worse. Uh, his agreements, a lot of times, they can, he controls cash. If you ever see Marcus Lamont's. Controlling cash will destroy the business because you can't pick how things get paid. And who gets paid. I'm going to go to the next one. This is a simple, I know it's, it's kind of chopped off there, but no. At any rate, this is what a, a, a kind of a beginning ratio profile looks like. I may have to read a little bit of that to you, but at the end of the day, working capital, I've got 43,000. Quick ratio, one to one is the normal level the banks will look at. You know your industry, by the way. In this case, they're 4-4, four, four, which is good. Current ratio, two to one, they're at one, good. I'll bank these guys. Most bankers or asset-based lenders or leasing companies will look at this and say, good, we're ready to go, let's do it. That's 10 seconds form, 20 seconds. They'll, they'll still go through all the other things that they have to do, looking up your uh, credit history and payment history. But these things, these ratios are important. Figure out the ratios that work for you, including both of these. Um, your bank borrowing base agreement or covenants, you need to know what that is every day. You may have to submit it at the end of the month with your financial statements or once a quarter. 
it depends on your business and industry, that will determine your relationship with your bank. Be transparent with your bank. If a customer fails to pay, it's Friday, they owe you $50,000. You need that money on Monday or Tuesday, you need to let them know. Be transparent. People conceal things from the bank. I was at an uh, industry conference, and the five C's of credit, I'm not going to go into them, but there is your, your character, how you do business, your capacity. But R is the one thing this banker told me that's missing today. That's respect. Respect for other people, respect for other people's money. He said that is the biggest problem he has. He has $30 million to invest. He has not been one investment in two years. And why is that? Respect is missing for money. People don't take it as seriously as they should. You need to respect your own money and what is owed to you as a service provider. You respect other people's money who is providing you service or product. Pay people on time. You'll be noted for it by everyone. And be expected to be paid on time. Uh, let's see. The next one. No. That's, I guess that's probably the, the simple wrap up of looking at uh, relationships with your assets, your money, your banking relationships, creditors, vendors. Negotiate with your vendors if you're running behind. Negotiate with your service providers if you're running behind. Don't surprise people. Because then that price, the next time you do business with them, you won't get a discount. You'll get an increase. And you'll want, you're going to find yourself struggling, or your clients or anybody else, struggling to be valid in the marketplace. Well, why don't we, we've got a great group here. We had some outstanding disruptions here. But I think Eric has really focused on the need for planning and knowing your cash balance knowing how your inventory, accounts receivable, to cash, planning these activities well so that you have the cash balance when disruptions <laughs> happen and you're able to make adjustments to manage through those disruptions. You have the balance sheet strength to manage through these disruptions. We have a short list, I think, that we can put up on this board over here some of the items that Eric mentioned. Carl, do you remember one of the items? Cash flow? Yeah, that, that help deal with disruption. Well, in cash in the bank. Cash right? in the bank, yep. Negotiate. Negotiate. DSL. What? DSL. 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 Know your days outstanding. Transparency. Transparency with who? With both your uh, uh, accounts payable and accounts receivable. Absolutely. People. And your bank. Yeah. And your bank. Sorry. Sorry. Good. Thank you. That you have. <clears throat> so dealing with, with disruption, building balance sheet strength involves having relationships transparency with people with your customers that owe you money but you are the customer of your vendor and you want to have good relationship with those vendors as well so that you can plan and if you need to make a payment late you have the type of relationship that they are accepting of that your business is disrupted you're going to pay a bill late. How do you approach that situation? Transparency, respect, respect. The one thing I think is really important is yeah. in line of credit. So when things are good, play with your banker. Yes. And get a line of credit, expand it, even if you don't need it. Yes. Because every time you can renew your line of credit, go to your banker and say, how about another? 50% fault or something. Yes. And it's going to cost you a little more money because they want more origination fee, but it's worth it. Yes. Is. When you don't want, when you need the money, is when you may not look as good. So when you look the best, is when you don't need the money, right? So let's get that done early, then you deal with that. So you are planning your relation, you are planning for a future disruption by building a relationship with your banker today. That is what's the yep. significant point. 
It would be incredible. Any other takeaways from our disruption? ACH. ACH. ACH, managing your cash, knowing those how those type of payments are made. Checks, how long checks take to clear, another example. You mail a check, really anywhere in the country, that, that, that check is going to clear like really almost the next day. They receive it possibly in a lockbox. And this is very significant to know check clearing. ACH is overnight. Wire transfers, anyone doing any wire transferring? Same day. Yeah. Wire, same day. One of the things you got to be aware of with ACH is, is that it's a loan from the bank to you. Yep. If you're doing ACHs, the bank is guaranteeing your credit worthiness. So it is, in fact, a loan. So if you have $5,000 in the bank, you want to do a $25,000 ACH, that could be a problem. And I mean inbound or outbound. It doesn't matter which. You have to actually match up the in and outbound balances with those banks. Not all banks require it, but many banks do. Yep. So these are tremendous issues in working, knowing these issues and how they're at play within your particular company, organization, no matter how large you are. You may, you may be a solopreneur, you be a member of a large corporation. Knowing how your business is dealing with these types of variables, dealing with potential disruption and how that could impact your company's ability to generate revenue, collecting that revenue. This is our focal point on building this balance sheet strength, is having this ability to really see the future, predict the future, and be able to manage to that, the potential things that could happen we're looking for good plan and allowing for potential disruption in your business environment. Any questions that come to mind or anything you want, folks want to share, Tom? So like a lot of those things up there, how, how do you forecast for that kind of stuff for future cash on hand that you might need? Now, obviously, well, as an example, down in Henderson, they got three roads into the town are flooded, oh and it's way past, so they get business in downtown. Or business. business disruption insurance. You can get insurance policies that will cover all disruptions within your industry, assuming you're credit worthy. If you're not credit worthy, you can't get insurance. But many insur most insurance companies have small business owner policies that will cover a percentage of business disruption. And the policies are very reasonable. You know, it's any wise pound foolish if you don't take them out because you know if something's going to happen. It will happen. It's just a question of what day it happens on. That's how you manage it, plus having a cushion in your cash reserves. But insurance is amazing if you work with the insurance companies and your broker. Another way to it, if, if the, in that situation, that's, a, I mean, that's, that's real. That is real. Small business in Henderson, Minnesota depends on people coming in, Buying, it might be a restaurant, might be, might be a bar where they coming in, having events, having bands come in, entertainment, and now no one can come in. But that business still has ongoing expenses. They have rent. They have taxes. They have their insurance wages, wages to their to their people if they can retain them over that period. And they don't have insurance. They have a good relationship with their bank. Their bank could potentially help them out. This is how you look at a business situation. Different ways to manage through difficult situations, disruption. That is a great example, Tom. So thank you. Anyone else have a question or observation? I was just going to mention another possibility is like if there's any big road construction or big policy changes. I know it's exciting reading. But the state or the city or the county does send out notices of like upcoming meetings. So maybe you can have an influence on that. Or you can read some of the policy changes coming down. And then maybe adjust it. Well, what my thing, with, my first one was water main blows up on your street. That oh is gosh. not something you know anything about. And then the city goes, 
140 years old or whatever, we're just going to actually turn it into a project that wasn't on anybody's radar, and all of a sudden it's a year. Absolutely. So, these so of things, part of the things you need is you get it all done, and the insurance is great and everything like that. But all of a sudden, those people that are used to going there aren't going there anymore. So now you're going to have to do something marketing-wise or whatever to get that traffic back. You can offer an incentive discounting the price of which you had. Insurance will help you with that if you have the right coverage and policy. It's pretty amazing what they will tell you these days. In terms of uh, factors that affect cash flow, is there a ranking on them in terms of probabilities? Meaning this, this particular factor is likely to be more problematic than number two or number three? Is there yep. such a weighted averaging? Oh, yeah. Oh, you can do a weighted disruption? disruption? Yeah, yeah, you know, affecting cash flow. These are all weighted average. You can weigh weighted averages for your business just by sitting with a cup of coffee, a glass of wine, or a beer, and whatever works for you. Um, but you can weight average these by your business. Are the other ones that new customers, new markets, um, markets that go away? I had a client who was selling just amazing. They went from $100,000 to $6 million in three years in revenue using an e commerce platform. Stunning growth. They recognized, the owner recognized it was a risk with Amazon, but he didn't understand the magnitude of it. They now offer the three top sellers that he had, he's out of business as of last month. He's not my, it wasn't my client, I said get out of it, but he kept going and going, he said he's just gonna let it go. Amazon one day turned on the switch, his switch turned off, gone. And you can't do a business disruption policy for that, because that's competition. So, so, so to refine my question, so, Guys like you could sit down with any business <coughs> and with conversation and some analysis say these are your greatest, greatest areas of risk that you've got to be on. You can weight it. His yeah. weighting with Amazon should have been 80 percent. That's I mean you, you can you know if you just instinctively sit it down. That's an example of concentration, customer concentration, and I would say in business that is the number one area of examination. You may get started in business, and you have one customer that really puts you in business, which is great. But as you build your business, diversifying that revenue that you're earning so that maybe that customer is initially 100% of your revenue, then there's 70%, then there's 60%, then there's 30%. Anyone, and this is what we look for, is concentration of revenue generation with one particular customer. Because if that customer goes away, you are essentially out of business. So that is one area of planning that you can do. And you may, if you're a startup business, I mean, that one customer may put you in business, but you want to go to work right away in building that customer base. So you're not dependent on that one customer for your inventory to accounts receivable to cash. You have 10 customers that each bring in 10% of your revenue. You've got a great model. One goes away, you're still in business. But most businesses have the 80 to 20 rule. And the problem is those customers know that they've got a big stick. G is probably a good example of yeah. what he is. And they know how to be the suppliers with that big stay. It's very good. It's very true. Know your customer better than they know themselves. What are they going to do to you? What are they going to do to the marketplace? Channel disruption, vendors. Yes. Clearly, Amazon is a channel disruptor. I mean, who hasn't felt the pain of that or the benefit? The other side, if you buy off of Amazon, I do. I buy stuff off Amazon. I don't go to the hardware store anymore. I get it all from Amazon. I'm sorry, uh, Ace. I really liked you in the day, but I don't go to you anymore. Um, these are channel disruptions that are real. Yep. Um, just wait until the next level comes out. This is only the beginning. Any business group these days needs to look at Amazon as a potential competitor. And are, can your products or services be offered through Amazon? Is that a competitive threat to you? This is real. You're online, online competition. So I think. Have we covered just about everything? <laughs> covered everything. We've had a great hour of presentation. Brad, anything to add at the end here? Um, 
I'm a small business, so I, I produce events, so I'm basically selling space. Okay. That's my inventory. Yep. And I get paid before the event happens. A lot of this is kind of protected in that way, and then I have event insurance in case something happens. Look at that. So, insurance. It's good for protecting. I also yes. like to do things so that I'm working both sides. And so I don't, <laughs> yeah. Because I don't put it all into internet marketing. I have physical things that I do too. I do direct mail postcards. Yeah. I do a lot of live events and I do a lot of internet based. Because it just happened this morning. I used the word you, Y O U, on doing the post. And supposedly Facebook didn't like that for some reason. Wow. It should be flagged. So my post didn't. Happen. So you did not, that promotion didn't happen. Correct. You were expecting results from that promotion yes. and it didn't happen. That's why I play on multiple platforms uh, LinkedIn yes. and Instagram and yep. Pinterest and Facebook. And Excellent example. Diverse. Excellent example. Well, this has been an outstanding hour, I think. Jan, could you bring us? Bring us back. Bring, Bring us, us home. Back. Thank All you, right. guys. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> we just want to let you know our next power lunch is May 30th and it's at our park location. Charles Goldstein is the speaker. And his topic is hiring for the solopreneur. You've been successful at your craft and in your industry, and it might be time to hire an employee. But wait, what about the legal practicalities concerns surrounding having employees. Attend this power lunch and learn from a veteran attorney focusing on employment law, what ground you need to cover to make sure that you are legally compliant in that process. Make it a successful experience rather than a legal mire that could potentially even do your venture rather than enhance it. So that's Charlie on May 30th. Reminder, Blackjack Friday is tomorrow, last Friday of the month, so everybody stop in and they can take See how many winners we can get. We have a few May events like we do every month, but our ours um, Thursday, May 2nd, we have Park Connect from 9 to 10 at our park location. France on Court from 4 to 6 on May 14th, Tuesday. And Slice of Woodbury, 1130 to 1 on Tuesday, May 24th, or 21st, excuse me. You can find all our happenings on the website, so please check us out. Again, thank you for joining us, and let's have an awesome Thursday. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thanks, guys. I think there's Love. still some pizza left. Yeah. There's cookies. If you want to stick around, we'll be here. And uh, 